Hi guys and welcome back to our FIFA 21 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. So in this episode there has been a few fixture changes. Uh, originally in the last episode we did have Arsenal to play in this month as well but there has been a few fixture changes and it looks as though there's going to be a big pile up in March. As you can see the Arsenal game has been moved to the 29th of March. So in this episode we are going to round off February where we have standard Liège twice in the round of 32 I believe it is is it the round of 32 yes it is the round of 32 in the Europa League so we have two legs there which are going to be really really important then of course we take on Manchester United at the stage of light in the Premier League so what I'm going to do with this episode I think is depending on how we do in the first game so for example we absolutely batter them then they'll play the United game and I'll just quick sim the uh, the second leg against Liège but of course if it's a bit tighter I might just watch the Man United game and then jump in if I need to. And anyway, yeah, we'll just play it by ear. But before we do get into the games, one thing that was brought up in the last episode, which I thought was a very, very good point from one of you guys in the comments. I have, of course, been complaining about Van der Voort recently in goal. He's been really, really poor, mainly when shots are coming at him at the near post or going straight to him. It, positionally, it, it's been horrendous. So someone did make a comment in the last episode that really got me thinking. Basically said, change his development plan. Even if it's it not necessarily going to improve his rating quicker, if he's been on the same development plan for X amount of time, for the entire time we've had him, he's only going to be improving in a set amount of stats. Maybe some stats haven't been improving since we've had him. So I had a look at him, and it does actually make sense. So I've changed his um, his development plan, so I will show you. So originally, I had him on goalkeeper, which of course only improves his diving, his reflexes as well, and the rest of it just kind of naturally goes up, but very, very slowly. But if you could see, his goalkeeper positioning has not been improving at all, well, or really, not very much anyway, it's on 71, which is poor for a Premier League goalkeeper, so anything that's coming at him at the near post, he positionally is placing himself in the wrong place, maybe I'm just looking for excuses for him here, to be honest with you, but I think it's a very, very good point, so I've changed it from goalkeeper to uh, to sweeperkeeper, even though it does take an extra week to improve his rating, it, his handling's going to start improving, his kicking will improve, and his positioning, which is a big one for me, which is his main, um, his main floor anyway. So that is a very good point. I'm going to leave him on that for the rest of the season and hopefully he does improve. But now to the first leg in the Europa League in the round of 32 against Standard Liège. And this is the side we're going to go with. We have Van der Voort in goal, Hume, Kawasi, Mavropanos and Lamptey across the back with Nelson, Bryce, Gravenberch and Medweke in midfield with Frenchy and Gel Pedro up top. Let's get into it. And here we are under the lights in Europe. This is what football is all about as we do take on Standard Liège. It is pouring it down. But it only adds to the atmosphere here. And it is Mavropanos that leads us out today. Van der Voort, of course, returning in goal. Hopefully his development plan does slowly but surely improve him. Because I do like him, you know. It's been very good since we did buy him. It's only since the level we've faced has increased in the Premier League that he just turns absolute shit, basically. So hopefully he does improve. And in time he can become one of the best keepers in the game. And I'm sure he will do. Nice football. Bryce, now I can see some space for Medweke if he fancies moving. It is Medweke. It's a good touch from Medweke. That's beautiful. Medweke, what a goal that is from Noni Medweke. Oh, my God. Get in. Look at the way he's dinked it past his man. I've never done something like that before. That is absolutely class straight away in this game. It's a beautifully pinged ball over from Bryce. He one touch. Look, and he flicks it past him. That is beautiful. Oh, my God. That's the best goal I've scored in FIFA 21. I'm not even arsed. I know it doesn't look too impressive, but the way I've managed to just perfectly time the flick past his man and then put it in the corner like that. Get in, son. What a goal. It's a great start for us. A perfect start for us. And what a way to do it. Another corner from Bryce. Go on, Kwasi. This is yours, mate. It's in. There we go. It's 2-0. Easy as you like. And it's Kwasi yet again. He scored from a corner in the last episode. It's becoming the new adder of bio. Two cheat codes we've got at the back to come forward for corners now. Come on. I said if we batter them, we might not even have to play the next leg. We can just quick sim it. Because they're playing terrible at the minute. But only 50 minutes have gone. Here's Madrake. So skillful. Still Madrake. Can he bend one in with his left foot? He can. And it's a save. Down the line. Oh, yeah. I've only just realised, by the way, that I've changed uh, changed it so you can see the names above the players' heads. Because someone did comment that a few uh, episodes ago. And I thought I'd give it a go. And it's not as distracting as I thought it would be. But now I say that, they could score. That's a class challenge by Mavropanos. Go on. Big touch. Big touch. The shows Frenchy. Quick side if you can. Take him. There we are. Big touch. And again. Go on, Frenchy. All the way. You've got it, son. It is Frenchy. Can he take the keeper? He's tried to. Oh, what an effort and what a goal that would have been. 
Well in, well played, Graham and Birch. And there goes the half-time whistle. It's been a perfect start for us, 2-0. Two really decent early goals. We've been absolutely flying. Defensively looking absolutely perfect as well. I'm not going to get too carried away, because every time I do, we end up conceding three or four. So I'll shut my mouth now, but it's been a really good start to the episode. Good chance for the Mia now. Coming down the right hand side, it's a great chance, in fact. Where are you, Van der Voort? He's made a good save in the end, I guess, but... Jesus Christ, where the, where the hell was he going? That positioning really is starting to shine now, isn't it? Oh no, don't let him get in. It's a good chance and it's a save by Van der Voort. It's a good day, this. Van der Voort is saving shots. He's doing things, he's doing his job. <laughs> How have Standard Liège been such a different side in the second half? Look at now, they're passing around like Barcelona. It always happens, a switch just feels like it's been flicked and they start playing well again. Now where is Nelson? Can we maybe get our break? Our counter-attack of dreams as we do. Send him. That is a terrible, terrible pass. Don't do that again. Oh, it's a good chance now. Robo show down this left side for standard Liège. There's acres of space for him. Get up to a great challenge. Don't you dare, referee. I thought he was going to try and give a penalty then. Don't let him get through. See how they're just working their way through us here. No, no gaps, no gaps. And again, no chance. Get it away, lads, please. Come on, send him, send him. Please don't give it straight to him. There we go, lovely stuff. Now, can we counter? We can. Surely now, just keep going. Please, Frenchie, make your move in the middle. Don't run straight to me, please. Get it across if you can. He does. Surely get in. It's 3-0. Completely undeserved. It's our first chance in the second half. But we've completely taken it, and it's Frenchie. You can always rely on Isaac French. Get in. The counter-attacker dreams in full flow. Drives it across goal at point-blank range, and he lashes it home. Keeper had no chance. We've been pinned back into our own half the entirety of this second half. We've defended well enough though, and we've made it 3-0 away from home. We're definitely going through to the next round now, you would think anyway. Good football this now, and it is. Bryce, can he take on his man? Yes, he can. Lovely stuff from Bryce. He dinks it across goal towards the back post. It's four, and now we've really turned the jacks on. And it's your bedroom who gets involved now. Get in. Bryce being the architect as usual. Look at that. Lovely little flick around his man. Dinks it across goal. Joe Pedro, what it all to do, wrestled in front of his man. It's a lovely header. 4 0. I have to say, it's undeserved in the second half because we literally haven't left our own half for the majority of this, um, this second period. But as soon as we got that counter attack on to make it three, they've absolutely collapsed again. Standard Liège. Well played, Graham Birch, cleaning up as he does. Lamptey, can he put it to his teammate? Yes, he can. Lovely stuff. It is Madweke now. Look at that turn of pace from him. Dink it in. Surely. Touch. Bang. There we are. It's five. We've absolutely rinsed them here. Absolutely rinsed them. 5-0. Not long to go. João Pedro is just so, so lethal in front of goal. Madweke has been on fire in this episode, or in this game, should I say. One touch from Pedro, and then lashes it across goal. Absolutely battered him. I brought on a handful of subs as well. Bellingham, Roberts, and uh, Ricky J. Jones as well. Just to give them a little bit of game time. First team action. Keep them happy. Full-time whistle looks set to go now. 5-0. An emphatic win that has been. I thought the 2-0 head start when we scored a couple in the opening sort of 11, 12 minutes. I thought that was good enough. I didn't expect to go that far considering how well Standard did play for the majority of that second half. But we've just gone on. Every chance we've got, we're taking. We're just getting more and more lethal in the final third. So with that 5-0 win, I think we're definitely going to play this game against Manchester United, who are currently second in the Premier League. And we'll quick sim the second leg because... Even with Quixi, McCotsey is losing 6-0. Do you know what I mean? Hopefully, anyway. I know what EA are like, but hopefully that isn't the case. And we do manage to just sail through to the next round in the Europa League. We deserve it. We absolutely deserve it after that performance. And unfortunately, we are going to have to use a really mixed bag of players against Manchester United because we have, of course, only two or three days ago played that game in the Europa League. But we do have Van der Voort in goal, Miranda, Adrobayo, Kawasi, Onayan, Nelson, Bellingham, Gravenberch, Roberts with Jones and João Pedro up top. Hopefully this is enough, although in saying that, that United sorry, that United team is scary. Diaz at the back, very, very good centre-back. Greenwood, rapid. Rashford, rapid. There's a lot of pace in that side. Nkunku up top. Of, of course, you've got Wan-Bissaka on one side. I'm just looking at all the players that stick out for pace, and all of them do. Van der Beek is a really good engineer in midfield as well with Fernandes, as we've already, uh, we already know about. But can we get anything from this game? Let's get into it. Here we are. It is a lovely evening at the Stadium Light as we welcome second place Manchester United. We took on Manchester City 
their neighbours in the previous episode. It was a two-all draw, a dramatic two-all draw. Maybe a little bit undeserved after they did batter us for the majority. I was raging like crazy throughout that game. Nothing was going our way, but we managed to get away with a last gasp equaliser and get away with a two-all there. But if we do want to mount a serious challenge for this top four, even with what is pretty much a sort of second string squad, or at least a mixed bag of players, we want to try and get some kind of result from games like this. The bigger games, can we get it? Come on, lads. Greenwood now driving down this right-hand side. Miranda isn't the quickest. He's not quite Denver Hume. He's very good defensively. Don't get me wrong, Miranda, but he just doesn't have that pace that Hume possesses. Oh, come on. It's just wriggled through him. Far too easily there. We almost walked through his man. But it's a corner for us to defend early on. Get it away, get it away, get it away, get it away, get it away. Has been headed. It's a save. Point blank range from Van der Voort. It was actually had a good episode so far. I'm not going to speak too soon, though, when that one's gone into the side netting. God, we're getting battered here. Send him, send him, send him. I can see Ricky J. Jones. You're quicker than him. Get there first. Can he cut inside? It is Ricky J. Jones. Still Ricky J. Jones. Help him out. Help him. Can he send him? He does try and find him. Surely. Finish. It's in. It's 1-0 and it's Gravenberg. We managed to wriggle our way through that Manchester United back line. And Gravenberg has absolutely ploughed one home. Get in. Lovely little ball there. From Ricky J. Jones has split them and he's smashed it into that top corner. Get in. Just his second goal for them, club. Gravenberg, you won't think that the way he put that one away. We've had our backs against the wall for the opening 10 minutes or so. Our first chance, we put in the back of the net. And come Kuh now onto Van der Beek. Over swim, lads. Come on. Don't let them get past you. Oh, that's a terrible challenge that from Miranda. We'll take it though. Come on, get off him, get off him, get off him. Van der Beek now trying to mount an attack. Bruno Fernandez, the little magician. In midfield, don't let him find the gap. There we go, force him back. That's more like it. That's the defending I like to see. And Kunku now, trying to find some room. Vitzel, don't let him get back. Well played. Lovely defending, perfect defending so far. Gravenberch, come on, help him out. Help him out, there we go. It is Roberts now. He's not quite as quick as Madreki, but he has a bit of pace about him. Up against Luke Shaw. Take him. That is terrible from Roberts. Luke Shaw takes on 09 far too easily. It's Roberts trying to trap back in Luke's place. Come on now, it's Fernandez. Help him out. Well played though. 09 in. And that should go out for a goal kick. Surely it has done. Well, I tell you what, we are defending so, so well. I keep saying stuff like this, and I know I'm going to get proved wrong soon, but generally, we're holding our positions really well, forcing them into mistakes, defending at the right times, pushing them at the right times. Oh, it's Van der Beek now. Good chance. Go over to him. Oh, thank God he's sitting wide. I thought that was going to be a penalty. If he went down there, that should and probably would have been a penalty. You see, look, I've thrown myself in. If he goes to the ground, he nearly did. He stayed on his feet. That would have been a pen. We're really, really lucky and fortunate that we've got away with that. Still 1-0. And there goes the half-time whistle. I can't really complain. We've defended the entire half. Had one chance. Scored it. This could be a really, really important snatch and grab win this. Go on, get it away. Well played. Nicely done. Now can we break and counter in this second half? Go on. Surely referee, that's to be a foul. I'll take it. Send him off. Filthy that from Greenwood. Absolutely filthy. No booking, no nothing. Can't believe it. Got it. <laughs> Play it short. It is Bellingham. Can he maybe strike one from distance? He does, and it's easy for the keeper. I haven't shot since the goal. I just got a bit uh, eager there. Go with him, go with him, go with him, go with him. Good chance now for United. Oh, there's a man. Two men, three in the middle. Oh, thank God he's tried to mess around with the skill move there. Otherwise, we would have been absolutely screwed. But now can we break? Bellingham now driving. Make them into committing. Flick it on one more time. He's just left it. Can he play him back in? Yes, he can. Surely. Can he finish it? Yes, he can. It's too real. It's Ricky J. Jones again. It is completely against the run of play. But it's Ricky J. Jones who gets it. It's our second chance, or at least clear cut chance of the game. And we put it in the back of the net. Get in. The counter attack of dreams has left it onto Roberts. He's put it back in for Ricky J. Jones. I can't believe that. Right up the other end, if they didn't make a mistake and try and faff around with their skill move, they had two players completely free in the middle, but the left winger, who should have just crossed it in, he tried to mess around, he's lost the ball, and we've got him on the break. That's the difference, we're more clinical than them. That's it. Half an hour left, we're more clinical than them. That's yours. Get it away. Go on, Luke. Well in. Can Luke drive us forward now? It is Luke. Still Luke. Bombing forward now. Flick on if you can. Big touch. Oh, he can't get there. You can see the central midfielder coming out of Luke 09 there, couldn't you? 
Go on, Bellingham, take him. Lovely stuff. Go on, Bellingham, drive at him. Quick side. It is Ricky J. Jones now. Help him out. Lovely stuff now. It is Nelson. Can he drive it across? Goes to the near post. Tries to get there. It is Graven Birch. Big touch from him. He does strike one. Graven Birch. And it's a class save from De Gea. We're starting to grow in confidence now. It's our first real spell of pressure throughout the game because the other two have just been counter-attacks. Starting to pin them back ourselves here. Roberts whips one in. Can we make it three? Yes, we can. And it's João Pedro who gets it yet again. De Gea had no chance. There was too much power behind it. He's powered it into his own net. We're absolutely belting teams now. We're smashing them. We're defending well at one end. And we're so lethal at the other. Straight to João Pedro. Thumps it straight to De Gea. But he couldn't do anything about it. 16 goals in the Premier League for him. And it's only February. He could easily hit 20, 25 goals. You would think, come the end of the season, what a debut campaign that man's had. This game could have been so different had United utilised their early pressure where they had two or three really good chances. We could have been two or three nil down within the opening 15 minutes. We weathered the storm, we defended very well and every chance we got, proper chance we got anyway, we managed to put away 3-0, what a win. But now we will be rounding off the episode with a quick sim game against Standard Liège. I have played around. With, uh, with the side, just to give quite a few players some game time. Willis had just come back from injury. I'd give Altuve a chance in goal. Collins as well. Gooch, Sims up top as well. So it, this should be, regardless of the scoreline, this should be a pretty nice end to the episode, knowing that we are going to go through to the next round in the Europa League. Hopefully it isn't 6-0 standard. Otherwise we're screwed. But we shall see. And we win by a goal to nil. Lovely. Even with our really strangely adjusted side. It was Sims in the 32nd minute who give us the one goal lead and... A 1-0 win. So after that game, before we do round off the episode, I'm going to go through our monthly scouting reports. And we have a pretty decent one here. Pierre Bigot from France. His uh, overall rating is between 61 and 81, which is brilliant. Please don't tease me now and just give me like a 63 rated player. It's worth 1.8 million. If he's worth like late, sorry, if he's rated like late 60s, that'd be brilliant. But they always tease me like that and they'll end up being rated like 62. Um, but is anyone else of worth? I don't think they are. I'll just reject all these. Mario Vasquez could be something. He's worth 800k. I'll check him out anyway. I'll probably get rid of him. But no one else really piques my interest. Oh, yeah. So Pierre Bigot is actually rated 67, which is really good. Just 17 years of age. Let's have a look at him. Uh, he's jumping 74. Stamina 73, which is good. 69 strength. I like that. Sprint speed and acceleration isn't great. It leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, let's have a look at everything else. Defensive awareness, 65. Shot power, 65. Short pass, 69. And his tackling ability is actually very good. He could actually potentially be a very, very good player. Now, the rest we do have Chevalier, who's a keeper we've had in there for a while now. He's probably not going to make it. I might just get rid of him. Or leave him for the time being. We'll leave him. Uh, Meccano is now rated 60. He can play right back, centre back or left back. I could probably just bring him into the side, you know, and use him as a utility player. His potential is between 82 and 94. So he could end up being a very, very useful player. Mario Vasquez, only rated 61, not great if we're being completely honest. Uh, acceleration 78, sprint speed 82, that's very good um, for a youth player who's just coming through because usually they have really bad sprint speed and what have you. So two decent players we just brought through there. But I think Meccano, we might actually bring him out and put him on the loan list or something for next season. I think that could actually end up being a really shrewd piece of business there but this is how the league table looks at the end of the episode manchester city currently top of the pile three points ahead of manchester united who we, we've just demolished at uh, at the stage of light and chelsea in third spurs in fourth we are in fifth just a point away or a point behind spurs and we have a game in hand over them as well so we're in a really really good spot here to maybe creep into that top four for the end of the season with liverpool in sixth Arsenal in 7th and Burnley in 8th. Now the bottom three is the same three. Brighton, West Brom and Watford. Of course it is Watford again just adding to that horrendous goal difference. I mean West Brom isn't much better but they've conceded so many goals this season Watford. But that will be the end of the episode guys. If you have enjoyed please hit the like button for me. It would be massively massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now you take care and stay jamming.